Okay, we're going to jump into Genesis 27. Um, this is kind of turning the page on Abraham and Isaac, and now we're going to be introduced to the drama between Jacob and Esau, and then primarily beginning to focus on Jacob for the rest of the rest of the book of Genesis. So this is kind of a major turning point chapter. There's a lot of information in it that kind of sets the stage for multiple chapters coming up. Uh, the, I think the hidden nugget within the entire chapter is Rebecca's role. So what we have is um, Isaac is fading health-wise. He's afraid he's about to die. He wants to be able to bless Esau with the, the blessing of the oldest. He's going to bless him with a blessing. And this is kind of like a, um, you might even say a traditional blessing. But there's certain weight to this blessing. And both of the boys understand there's an importance to this blessing that comes. And, and from the line of Abraham is really what's happening is Isaac is extending the promises to Abraham that were going to be coming through Isaac, he's now extending them to the next generation. Now, the key understanding for Rebecca's role is when she was pregnant with these boys, it says the Lord spoke to her back in Genesis 25, the Lord spoke to her and said that the younger shall serve the older. And that's the key, I think, where Rebecca is, is faltering at this point where the, the blessing's coming and she's not sure that she can trust God that it will happen, so she intervenes. And this is a danger and a, and a good lesson for us all. I don't need to intervene in God's plans. I simply need to be obedient and to walk out what he calls me to. Rebecca inserts herself. She overhears Isaac giving Esau instructions to prepare for the blessing by going on a hunt. So Esau leaves the tent. He's out hunting, but Rebecca pulls Jacob aside, and they have this charade of Jacob pretending to be Esau by throwing a goat skin over his arms and preparing a meal and bringing it to Isaac uh, quite deceitfully. He tricks Isaac into the blessing. Isaac pronounces the blessing on Jacob, and Jacob leaves. And you can imagine kind of that scene where Jacob goes out one side of the tent, Esau comes in the other side, almost right on his heels and Esau's unaware of what has previously happened. Now at this point Esau is expecting the blessing but Isaac is caught up, caught off guard. He's like, wait. So so the drama of that interchange where Esau is now kind of doubly um, usurped by Jacob, one with the stew and uh, his birthright and now with the pot of meat and the blessing. So Esau is furious in light of this, and he's pleading, is there no blessing yet for me? And of course there's not, but Isaac pronounces a blessing, but it isn't the, it isn't the primary or the sought after blessing, it's kind of the leftover. And there is some, there is some kind of clues in that blessing for Esau. He is the father of the Edomites. And that kind of, that line eventually becomes uh, an enemy to the nation of Israel as you get into the New Testament. Uh, but the key to watch is Rebecca is still around and she has this um, kind of her spidey senses are up, you might say, and she overhears or gets word of Esau is now plotting his revenge. He's like, well, if I'm not going to kill Jacob now, but when my dad dies, I'm going to kill him. And uh, that'll be his solace, is I'm going to at least kill Jacob. And that's where Rebecca again calls Jacob over, says, Jacob, Esau's going to try and kill you. You need to leave. And the setup then, as Jacob is leaving, for there to be a good reason for it, at the very end, Rebecca presents the argument that the daughters of the Hittites are driving her crazy because Esau's married two and possibly a third. Um, Esau's married multiple wives of the Hittites and this is the reason that Jacob should be sent away uh, back to Laban's family which is in Rebekah's plans so that he doesn't marry any more of these Hittite women and in this process God's plan is playing out but Rebekah's intervening unnecessarily we need to be able to trust that God will 
allow for the older to serve the younger if that's what God has said will happen. So you see sin entering in, God's still working it for his plans, but the sin isn't necessary. And that's the key to this chapter. The sin is not necessary because the cost for Rebecca is as Jacob rides away, this is the last time she ever sees him. He was his favorite, he was her favorite son, and this is goodbye. As Jacob rides away, uh, that's that's all that she'll uh, ever know of Jacob again. So kind of a sad story in that sense, but it sets the table for all of the drama coming up, going through uh, the next several chapters, we'll see it. So that's our, that's our chapter, uh, Genesis 20. Seven.